You're smiling in the picture. Yeah. You look like someone who loves skating. I loved skating. It's a great photo. <laughs> yeah. This is the Burlington Figure Skating Club, I believe. So how old uh, would it have been? I'm going to say grade six or seven. That would have been right around the time that uh, that I started training with, with my new coach. Brian Jessup hardly ever looks at these pictures. They're from a chapter in his life he spent years desperately trying to forget. It, it's hard. It's, it brings back a lot of memories. Jessup rarely comes here. In fact, it's been years since he's put on his skates. The abuse was just, that was normal to me. I had, um, you know, it started at such a young age that I had no previous prior sexual um, encounters or anything like that with anybody ever, right? Jessup was 12 years old and one of the top skaters in Ontario when he met coach Kevin Hicks. Hicks would go on to abuse Jessup for the next six years, altering his life forever. It was very slow. Looking back, sure he realizes how vulnerable he was. His father was an alcoholic, um, his mother wrestling with mental was, illness. You know, he, he made me feel special because uh, he took me on vacations, bought me nice clothes to wear. Um, I didn't come from a family that had a lot of money. When he was 13, he moved in with Hicks and the abuse escalated. He absolutely let me know um, that he was in complete control of not only my skating career, but my life as well. You know, um, I would be nothing if he wasn't part of my life. And uh, he was quick to remind me of that often. What happened to Jessup is familiar, says Noni Klassen, the director of education at the Center for Child Protection. She says many of the victims tied to CBC's findings have similar stories. And it starts before the sexual touching, okay? So it starts with the inappropriate relationship, the misuse of the relationship, transgressing to a place that becomes much more personalized, much more personal, and much more secretive. Like, looking back on it, there had to have been people close to me in my life and in the figure skating world that had to have some at least suspicion that maybe something was going on. I mean, I was with this man, like I said, 24 hours a day. And uh, that was just, that wasn't normal. Jessup skated through the abuse until he was 19, before abruptly leaving the sport and severing ties with Kevin Hicks. For more than 20 years, he didn't tell anybody about what had happened, the secret nearly destroying him. I got to a, a pretty dark point in my life. I was, you know, abusing alcohol and drugs on a, on a daily basis, so I wasn't a probably pleasant person to be around. Um, and I, I always had hatred towards him for, for what he had done, and it just got to the point where I blamed everything wrong with my life on him. It took years before Jessup would tell police, which is a common thing for victims of childhood sexual abuse. And that takes an unbelievable amount of strength and courage to be able to do that because the impact of this type of abuse on a child is incredibly corrosive. And that's, that impact is something that extends with them throughout their life, and it extends way beyond their time and experience in the sport. Kevin Hicks was convicted of sexually assaulting Jessup and another young skater, whose name remains protected by a publication ban. Hicks was sentenced to four years in jail, but released after less than a year. So it wasn't the justice I had initially was seeking, 
but it was very uh, empowering for me uh, to see him as a defendant in the court of law. And I was able to tell in detail actually what, what pain and suffering he put me through. Jessup says talking so, about what happened to him is central to his recovery. Yeah, I look at these and they seem so young and innocent. He's sober, employed, and happily married. A large dining room table fills a room in his home, space for his large, supportive family. And for the first time in years, Jessup is talking freely about his past. Yeah, every kid wants to be great at something, right? And that's what I was great at. I believe in my mind um, that I could have been the best in the world. I'm happy with my life right now. I'm in a great place and, and uh, things are going well for me, but uh, it could have been a lot different, you know. Jamie Strashen, CBC News, St. Thomas. We expect the numbers our investigation revealed will prompt questions. So we're bringing together a panel of experts later this week to help answer them. Whether you're a parent, an athlete, coach, or a club administrator, we want to hear from you. And you can submit your questions about overcoming sexual offenses in amateur sport to the national at cbc.ca. Also, tomorrow, right here on the program, we're going to continue our series, Shattered Trust, Amateur gymnastics in Canada has been rocked by criminal charges against coaches, but predators can be awfully hard to spot. You had told me that you did your background checks and all yeah, of that? Yeah, yeah, we did as much as we could as we normally did. There was no flags at all. It's just, it got right by me. You know, like there was no, no bone in my body that wanted to go look deeper into the problem because I thought I saw the, the guy every single day and I trusted him. You thought you knew him? I thought I knew him, yeah. It breaks my heart that there are kids who are hurting. Every sport should have challenges. Kids should learn resiliency. They need to be accountable. They need to be hardworking. All those things, that's what makes an athlete special. They, they don't need to be degraded. They don't need to be beaten down. They don't need to endure inappropriate behavior ever.